okay, so first question is pretty basic. Uh, your name, where are you from, your occupation, and how long did you know Dr. Hashem? Who should uh, be audio? We'll start with Ahmad Dawson. Okay, uh, my name is Ahmad Awesome. Uh, I'm from Egypt, currently unemployed, and uh, I have known Dr. Nasruddin for more than nine years. Uh, that's it. <laughs> yeah, it's Wait, called in transition. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the good name of it, in transition. Uh, Dr. Farid? So, my name is Ahmad Farid. Uh, I'm a senior reservoir engineer. Uh, I have known Dr. Hisham for uh, almost seven, eight years. Yeah, and from Egypt. Yes, it's, from Egypt. Uh, <laughs> Zakaria? Uh, Ahmed Zakaria, project manager, uh, pressure of bombing technology and engineering, uh, Bikar Hughes. Um, uh, I, I think all, I, uh, the first time I met Dr. Hisham was, I believe, in 2011. So that was almost nine to ten years now. Hello everyone, uh, my name is uh, Ahmad Chahata. Uh, I was one of uh, Dr. Nasruddin uh, students. Uh, I joined Nasruddin group in 2013. Um, the first time that I met Nasruddin was uh, in 2011, uh, while he, was, uh, he had a uh, course uh, in Egypt. Um, now I'm working as a senior project manager with Intertech. Slava. Hello, my name is uh, Vyacheslav Kudryashov, Ilya Slava, and uh, I uh, met Dr. Nasruddin in August 2013, so it was almost seven years. And now I'm working as an assistant professor in uh, Sleepy Rock University in Petroleum Engineering in Pennsylvania. Um, Kate? <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Kate Sokanvarian. Uh, I first met Dr. Sham 2011, January, so it makes it, I think, over nine years. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, actually his former student, uh, now working uh, as market developer in Sasol. And yeah, one of his uh, biggest troublemaker based on him. So, and I intend to remain the same. Yeah, you're muted. Mihail, unmute yourself. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, go ahead, Abhishek. Oh, that's me? Okay. Yeah. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good morning, everyone. Abhishek Panase, I'm from India. I've known Dr. Hisham uh, since the last nine years. January 2011 was the first time I met him. Uh, currently working in as an application scientist uh, related to asphalting field with Clarion Corporation. And I did my master's with him. And then during my PhD also, he was closely involved with my uh, doctoral research. Yamak? Uh, hi, my name is uh, Rafat Mahmoud Yama, and uh, I'm from Lebanon. Um, I met Dr. Nasruddin in, uh, let's see, 2014, when I had went to him. Uh, I wanted to be an undergrad researcher. I uh, had always known Dr. Nasruddin from the community, so I wanted to work in his labs as an undergrad student, and uh, I uh, loved his research and the students that worked for him, and I continued my master's with him afterwards. Hey, Sharif. Hi, my name is Sharif Abdel Manam. I met Dr. Nasruddin in 2011, and I joined his group in 2012, and I did my master's with him didn't finish my PhD with him, unfortunately. Uh, and currently, I'm working as a part-time consultant. Hi, everyone. My name is Kim Ji, a petroleum engineer from Review Energy Services. 
uh, the first time I met Dr. Nasaldin was the summer of 2012. That's about a little bit more than eight years ago. Uh, I'm from China. Ah, great, thank you everyone. Uh, so my next question is going to be about your point of research. Uh, what was it about? Why did you choose it? And what was Dr. Hisham's input in selecting the point? So let me just start with the ladies. Kate. <laughs> So uh, my master and PhD research uh, was mainly around the stimulation area. And uh, basically, Dr. Hasham's project uh, was uh, involving, uh, involved with, uh, with involvement of, of industry. So he was getting fund uh, from uh, industry, and those projects were real world uh, problems. So basically, he was offering us the projects that he knew uh, uh, we can find solutions in industry, and then as a result, we can find jobs around them. Okay, can you um, elaborate more on your research? Like, what was it exactly about? Yeah, sure. So my, my PhD research was, I worked on two different projects with two different companies that uh, they were funding the project. One of them was to uh, commercialize a new acidizing system for carbonate to address the problems associated with the regular HCL that they were using at high temperature. Uh, uh, and then it was with Weatherford became along the way because um, Lubrizol bought that uh, section of Weatherford. The other project that I was working uh, on my, uh, for my PhD was around uh, hydraulic fracturing fluids uh, so uh, it was just cross-linking uh, GUAR derivatives with a new cross-linker to address uh, the conventional frac fluid that they were using uh, based on bor boron and GUAR. I hope that's enough. Yeah. Perfect. Chen? Sure. Um, so my research is acidizing sandstone reservoirs using different acid systems. Um, the first time when I joined Dr. Hisham's group, um, I know nothing about petroleum engineering. I was a civil, my master was civil engineer. So Dr. Nasodin chose the topic for me and uh, he pointed me um, to uh, very good um, former students as my mentor or like um, helping me with the experiments. So I learned a lot from that. Yeah. Uh, what was your background? Not a challenging? Yeah, I'm, I'm a civil engineer. Uh, civil engineer. Designing the building. Yeah, the bridge building. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but Dr. Okay, Nazarbek okay, trained okay, me okay, to be so. a good petroleum engineer. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Years. So, Ahmed also? Okay. Uh, like Khatira said, uh, most of the fund was coming from operators and service companies. So, it was like mix and match. Dr. Nasruddin has X number of projects, and he asked the student which project you're interested in. You might find one that interests you. If you don't like any of them at all, and for example, if you're a teaching assistant, maybe you can pick something different. But most of the time you pick something that interests you from what he has. So during my master's, uh, when I joined in August 2011, he had like three or four projects starting at that time. And I, used, I chose to work with uh, iron precipitation during matrix acidizing in carbonate reservoirs and how to mitigate, mitigate them using chelating agents. And uh, in my PhD, I... Uh, I switched the topic to work with uh, acid interaction with commercial propens, uh, also in like in sandstone and shale. So I tried to work in two different areas, but again, it was mainly metric exercising and hydraulic fracturing. Thank you, Zakaria. Yeah, so I want to actually share something that I uh, really learn it from him while during my research projects because when I start joining when I mean I when I joined and the M to work with him 
So he assigned me first a project that's not related at all to the petroleum engineering. So I didn't make any comment and I started working on it. And then three months later, and he called me to his office and then asking me again to stop working with this project. And then he assigned me another project that's also not related to petroleum engineering. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna uh, stop on that and then work again on another project. And then two months later, same thing happened. So that's like three projects on, <laughs> on a row that are no, not related to petroleum engineering. Uh, and uh, like I, so I was like spent almost the first year jumping from one project to other and they are all not related to petroleum engineering. So that was like the first year gone. So I went back to his office and I said, I was like a little bit confused and a little bit like, I mean, say, okay, like I'm new, I've been jumping now from one project to other for the first year. So what would be my main research project? And uh, like, I mean, with his funny comments that like he always made and you all, you all know about him. But he said that, uh, okay, I mean, during my life, I never worked on something that I'm familiar with. And uh, actually you are here to learn that, that you, will, that you will always work on something that you will never be familiar with. And uh, actually after the first year passed, like, I mean, indeed, like when, I, when I'm assigned my really, the main research project I have, I have been uh, or have worked on, it was a funded project from a big oil and, and the gas service company. And uh, it really requires really good knowledge about uh, soil mineralogy, like uh, geology, chemistry. And at that time, I, did, I, don't, I know nothing about those, those sciences. But uh, to be honest, what I have realized that I have actually learned it from him how to, I would say, how to learn, how to think systematically, how to approach the problem that you are trying to solve in the right way. Like, I mean, I worked on something that I'm not familiar with. And uh, that's what I realized that I have learned it. The main thing I have learned it from him. And actually that project ends up with the really good model that maybe it's, it's now incorporated in the assets software for that big oil and gas service company that's being used in all over the world. I did the first patent out of that project and all because of what I have learned from him about working or how to think systematically and working on a problem that's not that's that you are not that you know nothing about it in the first place so so that's something one th one thing i want to share about what i have learned from him and it uh that's was like among too many things i have learned actually from him so. subhanallah ahmed you remind me of soil mineralogy he used to love that class and it was huge it was five credits so if you get a b or c out of the class yeah, it's very hard and I was like, I mean, I'm even, he asked me to, to take that course before I even know that my research project. And I was like, why did I take this course? It's way beyond my background and I, I know nothing about it. But, but I mean, and, and actually that's like one of my strengths or like my, one of my skills that I have been using every day here in my work. Is like you always work with something that you are not familiar with. And, 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 and that's the that, that big thanks for, for, for him. And, and that's a big thing that I have learned actually from him. Great. So, Okay. Um, my research was about uh, low salinity water flooding uh, for sandstone um, uh, formation. Uh, we studied the role of um, uh, clay content and rock quality on the performance uh, of uh, low salinity water flooding uh, during secondary drainage and. Uh, uh, tertiary recovery uh, mode. Um, um, when I joined Nasruddin group, um, I was interested to work in the area of enhanced ore recovery. Um, and Nasruddin, uh, the main uh, topic area was acid diving and formation uh, damage. Uh, so in the beginning, he asked me to read about um, uh, surfactant and carbonate formation. He told me that we might get project about uh, this area. So I spent um, the first two or three months just reading the literature and prepare a proposal plan about uh, this area. Um, and after three months, he also called me and said, um, um, I want you to work on um, uh, another project, um, which was uh, low salinity water flooding. Uh, Dr. Nasuddin was one of the um, uh, professors that he has 
a small group, three or four students, um, two from uh, Aramco and uh, one from Shell. They will focus uh, on this area and they did uh, a good job in the literature in the area of um, low salinity water flooding. Um, so I started to read uh, about uh, this point and highlight uh, from the literature which points that we can investigate and uh, work on it. Um, usually Nasruddin uh, rule, um, he gave you the freedom uh, to uh, um, try to work on what you, uh, what you like. If you have fund and you have a, a certain topic, you can select which point and his rule usually to guide you. So um, his office was usually open to go to him and ask if you have any question. Uh, if you want to get a material and we don't have um, the material in, uh, in the lab, he usually uh, give you the financial support uh, to buy new material or uh, if you need uh, any equipment and he, he can get that for you, he help you to get that. Uh, also, he can support you um, and just guide you if um, you need to have a new course that will uh, give you the basics for, um, for example, in uh, the sandstone, uh, low salinity water flooding, you have to understand the mineral composition. Uh, and usually as a petroleum engineer, we don't have this basics. So usually he recommend that you can go and get another course from soil mineralogy uh, department. Uh, to try to understand um, what the main component of uh, uh, the reservoirs. So that was uh, Nasruddin's uh, role in our uh, research. Great. So, okay, Abshak. Yeah, so my master's research under him was related to understanding the reaction kinetics of uh, organic acids. Uh, during matrix acidization, especially focusing on carbonate rocks. Again, the reason why uh, that topic was given to me was because he is known as a stimulation guru, guru in the industry. He has created an extensive amount of knowledge on acidizing. But this particular topic of reaction kinetics was something that he uh, felt would be uh, is a missing link in the, in the industry. So he wanted to explore that. And that's how he, I ended up with that topic. He knew my background was petroleum, so he felt comfortable that I can uh, probably take this topic uh, and do some justice with, with it. So during the two years, he always played a supporting role and helped me with uh, all the issues I had uh, when it came to the chemistry aspect, because uh, he always said petroleum engineers are zero on chemistry, and he was very true on that. So I have had to rely quite a many times on him to understand the, chem the chemistry side and the reaction kinetics uh, side of my research. And uh, such as like with his uh, help and guidance, I was able to get some, uh, I would say algorithms ready uh, for, for modeling this reaction kinetics. And going forward, I couldn't pursue it, uh, pursue my PhD with him, but I think the plan was to take forward this algorithms and incorporate them in some stimulation software going forward. Uh, I couldn't do that, but uh, that algorithm that were developed was used by future students. And I think there were some publications uh, going forward, which helps incorporating those algorithms in the software. So his vision of trying to understand the kinetics aspect, aspect of acidizing and then utilizing it has, I, I would say, has been fulfilled by, with the researchers that has gone forward. On this on this frame of topic. Great, thank you so much, Ayamak. Uh, so uh, I did my master's with uh, Dr. Nasruddin, and uh, with me he was very. Uh, he, Dr. Nasruddin to me was like a father. So he just told me, "I just want you to find something that you're interested in." So he didn't really assign me any project. He kind of he went unorthodox with me. So um, I out. It was during a, uh, an internship with Halliburton where there was a, a group of Halliburton scientists that were working on a project. It was uh, seawater-based fracturing fluid. Uh, they were trying to use seawater as an alternative to freshwater at the time, especially, and I did it in Saudi Arabia, so freshwater there is very scarce. And we utilize different polymers and different cross-linkers and different concentrations of different additives to 
try to generate an optimal fracturing fluid. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I did all my testing overseas. And when I came back, um, I ran a couple of more experiments in Texas A&M laboratories. And uh, Dr. Nasruddin was, uh, you know, made it, made it clear to me that he, has, he had deadlines that I had to show him. And even when I was overseas, I had to continuously send him email updates. And, uh, you know, the, the thing with Dr. Nasruddin uh, was that you would get an email at random times, maybe 2 a.m., 7 a.m., 3 p.m. So it was always a surprise. But he kept me, he kept me on my toes, and uh, I'm very thankful for that because my research was uh, – he was very impressed with it, thankfully, and I was impressed with the product. So that's a bit about my research. Uh, so you Mike, she is muted. Is it me now? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't hear. Okay. All right. So, uh, I when I was just coming for my masters, before that I was working on uh, artificial lift actually, and it had nothing to do with hand store recovery or acidizing. But I was kind of open to new subjects, and so uh, I actually remember the very first project was uh, on uh, acidizing of uh, unconsolidated sandstones in Canada. That was the very first proposal we've written, uh, and it was just uh, one of the emails that Dr. Nasruddin forwarded one day, and I remember sitting in my office receiving, if anyone interested, uh, write a review of literature and come see me. And at that time he was in 610, that was his old office, and I was in 609 right across basically the wall. So we discussed, and yeah, that was the first proposal that got sponsored. Uh, we designed acidizing, basically chelating agent uh, acidizing of sandstone. Later, that project kind of transformed into uh, also recovery factors for heavy oil. And actually, uh, that was part of my PhD as well, which Sharif actually helped me a lot with uh, designing the uh, steam injection setup that we plugged into Core Flood, which later uh, I also modified and uh, used that fundamentally for investigation of mineral reactions, basically doing steam injection basically what happens to different clays as they interact with different uh, chemical agents and transform into some potentially formation damaging uh, material. So that was fundamental research. Commercially, we also did projects on um, hydraulic fracturing gel uh, formulation on flowback analysis. Uh, there were a lot of projects. Uh, we tested different compatibility fluids and so on. But either way, uh, that was basically the story, I guess, of my research. Thank Sharif, you, Sharif, Sharif, Sharif was the king of core flood. Yes. <laughs> Still uh, well, I didn't tell, tell us the story then. <laughs> Oh no, Sharif used to uh, like, uh, fix the core flood whenever there was issues with it. He would just, you know, do all kinds of work on it. He, he was he, he was the boss. Like when there was any issues, you'd go to Sharif for the core flood. He knows. Yeah. He was on my speed dial. Whenever I was yeah. working on car flood, <laughs> I, even if it didn't happen, I was feeling that something is happening so that I, can't, I don't delay my experiment. Even if I felt something is <laughs> going to happen, I would press one so that Sharif will come and <laughs> was showing up no matter the time. So, yeah, thank you, you, Sharif. It would be the first guy to invent a remotely controlled the core flood. I, I thought Shahada was event. in charge of the core flood, after right? Shahada. After, 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 after before me. But real world. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> the mastermind behind it was Sherry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go, go ahead, Sherry. <laughs> hey, Sherry, I need to hear the story from you then. So. <laughs> oh. Uh, I met Dr. Nasruddin, actually I came to a visit to him and Dr. Hobich was the one who proposed that I meet with Dr. Nasruddin so I can start working with him. So I met him in 2011 and we talked about 
what I'm doing with my life and my career in Egypt. And he told me that I need to start doing my master's with him. So in 2012, I joined him. When I first joined, there was a, a big group of students actually graduating at that time. So I think I had to take over like the projects from two students. In addition, I worked on a proposal which ended up on being Ahmed Farid's research. He hates me for it. I like I made that proposal up in I think twenty four hours. That's Dr. Nasreddin. He gives you a deadline that's so tight and gets you to work to your full capacity. So we did do that proposal and we got a grant from the government that it's a government funded project and Ahmed Farid took it over and he hated me and used to, anyways, we can't say what he used to say. <laughs> but after that, like one of the projects that a student was graduating on was, was Saudi Aramco and they needed an advisory system for sandstone acidizing and they needed a program that can, an interface that they can use easily to design their treatment. So, like, um, for, uh, I was the only one at that time in the group that knew some programming. And so I was assigned that project. And while we were working on the project, I came up with an idea of how to make that design kind of easier. And so I talked to him about it, and that eventually became my main research that I did for my master's. But the cool thing about Dr. Nasruddin is like, if he sees you have potential, he's going to push you like to explore that potential to, your, to the limit that he can. Like He's going to help you get to the best of what he can be. So you became the king of course blood, right? And, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, like I, I used to like fixing stuff. I used to like mechanics and electronics. And so it kind of happened that like one tool would break down and we don't know how to fix it or it's really expensive that we're not going to fix it. And so it's part of the things I'm curious in is I went and it was with one of the tools and we couldn't fix it. And I asked him, do you mind if I take a look at it? And we ended up fixing it for, a, I think, a dollar or something like that. Like, it didn't cost barely anything. And so eventually, he started off with, like, cheap equipment. I did a good job with that. And he started, like, giving me trials with bigger and bigger equipment until eventually I... I think I redid all of the core floods we had. We, I designed new equipment for him. Like that was a big part that I used to work with him on. And eventually, I started even like I started finding students from other research groups at Texas and I'm coming to ask me for advice for how to design their experiments and how to design new things. And that's one thing I learned because of him, definitely. I'll definitely come back to that. Uh, Dr. Farid, can you please uh, talk about your um, PhD and stuff? Yeah, so uh, I did work with Dr. Nasruddin for, from 2013 till 2008 and 18. Uh, four years for my PhD and one year as a postdoc. So during this five years, I did work for, let's say, around 15 projects something like this. Uh, my project has started, as uh, Sharif said, uh, from his proposal. It was for uh, CO2 uh, sequestration in coal bed methane. But then the good thing about this one, it was funded uh, for uh, three years and they extend the fund for one year. So I have a fixed fund for me for four years and I don't have to fear about uh, losing my fund. Uh, so it was, uh, I was open to work freely for any project I like. Uh, 
Uh, I started with a project uh, for this CO2 sequestration in Colbert Methane. It was experimental, experimentally. And then I like uh, simulation and numerical model and analytical modeling. So I added this one to my uh, thesis. Uh, then I saw like CO2 form. This is uh, one of the big application in unconventional reservoir like for uh, CO2 for hydric fracturing uh, operation, CO2 for enhanced oil recovery. So I added this one here to my thesis. So my thesis was mainly about CO2 application unconventional, include sequestration and enhanced culpit methane and CO2 form for, uh, for enhanced oil recovery and uh, hydric fracturing. Uh, after uh, like after like this one here, I, I did most of the work, uh, experimental work, everything uh, like was in around two years. And then I spent the rest of that for writing papers and writing thesis and so on. Then I did work for a different project. It was funded project also. Uh, I had an intern with Solvay. I was in a chemical company. And then at this time I analyzed, uh, investigated friction reducer for them, which is uh, one of the uh, most important uh, component for the hydraulic fracturing uh, fluid. So I want to be open for uh, other uh, projects to have an idea about what the industry needs and so on. So I did hydraulic fracturing, uh, friction reducer for hydraulic fracturing, DS viscous surfactant for acidizing and for foaming and for uh, hydraulic fracturing application. Uh, I did uh, new, a nano particle application for drilling fluid and for foam. I did uh, another uh, another one which was one uh, like or the last two projects that I did work on that helped me later on in during my uh, job, uh, later on after the postdoc. One was the uh, effect of shut-in in shale formation after hydraulic fraction operation. And the second one was the uh, effect of different parameters on the breakdown and the fracture network uh, during hydraulic fracturing uh, operation also. So uh, Dr. Nasruddin for all of this was like supporting me, was all his ideas, like I usually go to his office, let's say around 20 times a day or something like this. I was uh, responsible for uh, around five laps, uh, like, uh, and after Sharif, I was responsible for the, most of the equipment, the core flood, uh, fixing core flood, fixing uh, ICB, uh, inductive coupled plasma, uh, other stuff like I was helping fixing like the reactor. Uh, like I was responsible to get the cores. So for many stuff. So I did work with Dr. Nasruddin not just as a student for him. Uh, he was like a father for me, like for different stuff, like not just uh, study, not just uh, research but all my personal uh, life got affected by him. So it's like a summary for my uh, research with Dr. Nasiddin. Thank you so much. So actually originally I had a different plan for the questions, but I let you guys hear me. So uh, I think I'm seeing a family here between all of you guys and that you're supporting each other and helping each other. And I would love to hear more about this. I love I love to hear um, how Dr. Nasruddin created this family and how you guys stay connected and, you know, like support each other. Even if he's not here, you guys will still be friends and you still support each other. So can you like just tell me how he created this family? Obviously you have different countries, different genders and different pretty much everything. So I would like to start with Slava. Do you have anything to say about this? Sure, absolutely. I actually uh, remember when I came to Texas A&M, first of all, I went and talked to some of the Russian friends that I had there. And uh, they, and I also naturally asked for advice who should be a good advisor, who should I talk to, what they suggest. And uh, all of them actually told me to go talk to Dr. Nasruddin. 
And uh, uh, in fact, I just talked to him. And after talking to him, I didn't even want to talk to anybody else. Uh, I don't know. It's just uh, I immediately felt that he cares and that he has my best interest in mind. He actually was suggesting me to go talk to more people and figure out what I want to do. But um, yeah, I just felt that uh, it's a great team. And uh, right away, I got introduced to a lot of people who just immediately showed me around. Uh, within next week, I was already assisting with some, well, barely assisting, but at least was present doing some experiments in the lab. And so I was getting some hands-on uh, kind of experience and learning and seeing what's going on. So, yeah, being treated nicely, naturally, you want to pay it back. And uh, whenever new students come, I was also eager to help and was always glad to be there for others. It's just, uh, I think he was a great leader to give us all great example on how to respect people and uh, bring best in people. So. And that's why I think he was very respected by students and uh, loved. And uh, yeah, that's why all the differences we had in, in the team were easily solvable. So yeah, that's, I don't know if I answered your question, but that's my experience. And um, that's why I think we are, I do feel that Sharif was a uh, king of the core flood, but everyone was king of something at some point. So, and everyone was helping everybody else and it would be uh, research advice or just uh, conversation or it could be an actual design of some experiment or idea. So, yeah, I feel uh, when I see these faces, I just feel immediately that it's a reunion with old uh, family members. <laughs> yeah, you feel home. Yeah. Because I felt that when I joined, just the energy was different. Thank you, Slava. Uh, Abhishek. Yeah, so I concur with most of the things that Slava mentioned. It's a common theme. He spoke what all of us have in our mind with, uh, with regards to how Dr. Sham influenced us. Uh, one of the qualities I, I feel that worked very well for him in order to take this big group forward was Although he was so intellectually uh, above all of us, he was so smart, he was well revered. He had this amazing quality of being uh, a good listener and a great empathizer. So I think all of us as, as, as students or as his, uh, as, uh, as people, as his mentees would look up to him. And if we have any, any struggles, it was never very hard for us to go to him. So, and he would, always have his doors open. He would be very accommodative. He'll be very caring. Um, definitely, I'll, what Slava mentioned, he had the best interest of us. He, there, there are, and I can tell it from my personal experience because I worked with different groups. My PhD was with a different advisor. So although Dr. Hisham wasn't my doctoral uh, advisor, I would always walk into his room, even during my PhD days. Um, I, I used to be allowed to sit in the same office with most of the people I worked with during my master's, he didn't. There have been people who uh, who helped me during my PhD thesis, although they were not even in my in that group. Uh, Dr. Isham himself led the way in that. He was always supportive and took care of me, uh, which kind of highlights the personality that he had. It it wasn't a selfish act on. He didn't have a cell of being selfish in his body. He always was selfless and he just wanted to care about people and and make us as comfortable as possible because he knew down in his deep in his heart that for being a good researcher, you have to be feel felt comfortable and felt respected. And he, I think he made sure that all of us had had that thing first in, in implied from his and also from the whole group. And that's why I think one of the key thing, everybody will tell you that we all were part of his army, right? And I did mention that he was indeed an army leader because he would make sure each and every one of us took care of each other more than what we think of just ourselves and being selfish. So I can easily count so many instances uh, when people around um, who are present in this group and also who are 
in our in our offices they'll be more than happy to go beyond and um, i think sheriff uh, as you you just heard that he would be there helping all of us there were there were cases when at nights at 2 3 am we would go there and sheriff would be fixing something just so that the next day the other people can work on that course right it wasn't his research that was getting delayed it was other people who needs to go through and he would take care of that and same happened with farid asim shahata and all of us in fact all of us have tried learn from him to be thinking about others first and in effect everybody took care of everybody so personally also during the phd time which are the qualification time which all of us most of the phd student faced really trouble time to clear there was a group that he initiated led by um omar who's not in this call but i um, we all are very thankful to him and that he took the efforts to actually coach us and it was across the department it was like anybody who's giving phd qualifier were more than welcome and omar and um, Sh- um, hanafi they would teach us sheriff was there and people would just share experience khatara would share her experience asim would talk about how they were proceeded with their uh, qualification exams and would help us through it uh, and when we when we told him at the end that we were able to clear our qualifier or get acceptance on a conference paper or a journal paper or we clear our thesis he would be more than happy he will he'll be he'll act as if he has achieved something like he'd be so happy with our achievements uh same with with our jobs later on whenever we would visit him if we talk to him and tell him about the good things we are doing or the opportunities which came our way he'd be so happy he'll have a child like uh enthusiasm listening to us and he'll be so supportive all this while so i think international students uh he made us feel that it was home away from home at first and then that cleared our mind and made us comfortable to work together and work uh, on our research more clearly and easily so I think that that i would say would be the main reason according to me which help us all live together kind of for those 3 4 5 years that we were, that we were together thank you so much kate i can kind of tell that you're emotional now so i would like to hear from you uh Yeah so the question was why uh, you feel we are supportive of each other how we created that uh, i think most importantly was in his actions because uh, believe me you had to take words out of his uh, mouth he he was like he was listening much much more than he was talking all the time and uh, and he always used to say that you have two ears but one mouth so you have to listen more so and i think it was by example he was helping everyone so the first thing that always come to my mind when i think of him is that he always was willing to help anyone like uh, usually we human beings uh, it's it's give and take so even if it is not at a conscious level i believe that at a subconscious level is to take something uh, but for him he had the fame i mean he had he had most of the things that someone at a professional level needs and yet he was willing to help a student or anyone that comes to him uh even he even if a regular professor would think that oh this a student's grade is a is not a plus it's c he wouldn't care about that he would give the opportunity so he would not just think in absolute terms that i only take a students that they have a's in grade no i will take a students if they grade like rc but i'm going to shape them i'm going to help them so this attitude he always had like i saw it so so many times and uh Farid said that he used to go to his office 20 times so if he's saying 20 times i don't know i was going to his office 100 times maybe then so i don't even know but uh he was beyond uh, like advisor to me and uh, he will always be i i once remember that there was a guy uh who made some trouble with other advisors and he wanted to take him i was like why 
He said, it's okay. I mean, I want to help him. I was like, okay. So he took him and he made trouble for him again. So I went to him, I said, look, I told you, I mean, why you took him? And the same guy came back to him after he left the group to get a recommendation letter for a job because he had to leave the department. No one was willing anymore to take him. And he wrote a recommendation letter and uh, I was there. I said, why you are you doing that? After all he did, I mean, after he treated you the way that you definitely did not deserve that after all the help you provided him with. And he told me that he's young. I mean, why I should ruin his future? What, what will I gain? Be patient, like be forgiving, uh, be supportive. So, yeah, so not much in his words, really, that he keeps telling us support each other. No, I mean, he wasn't that much of a talkative guy, but in his actions, truly, I saw, I, I never can be like him, I, I'm going to confess, but uh, I try for, uh, I mean, in his honor, uh, I try to remember and remind myself of this as much as I can. Thank you so much, Kate, for sharing this. And I just want to tell you that no one would be like him, but he has a piece of his heart and his work in each one of you. So you already have him in you. So Thank you. Chaita, I would like to hear you, uh, because you gathered the group, so you must have an input on that. <laughs> okay, so um, when I joined Nasruddin group, um, uh, Nasruddin usually he had around 25 to 35 students at the same time, okay? Those students will be masters and PhD. So you can imagine uh, the age, okay? So you can find with him fresh grad and also be able that they work it in the industry and came to study with him. Nasruddin was managing his group as a small organization. So he was like the manager. Uh, he focused uh, most of the time to get the projects and uh, to deal uh, with the clients. And his group was like uh, a small organization. You can find each student has a role. So when I joined him, um, Nasruddin had around seven labs uh, in those different labs. You can find uh, labs for us diving only, another labs for uh, core flood, uh, uh, petrophysics, uh, mineral identification, um, uh, like XRD, uh, some BDT analysis for viscosity measurements and all of this stuff. So you'll find each student that he working on his project and at the same time managing one of these labs. And when he will find you that you can do more and uh, um, take more responsibility, he will give you that. Um, so the first day that I joined the group, uh, he will just let me know, let me uh, go and learn from this guy how we uh, use this equipment. Uh, follow this guy and see uh, what he is doing in uh, the research. Um, so you can feel that working in, in his group, uh, it was a family business. So all of us, we can help each other anytime. Um, and he keep doing that. When someone is about to leave, he give this responsibility to another one. So there is no gap. Um, for me, Nasruddin, uh, he was like the coach. He, uh, once he, he can see that you have something good, he can manage you to get the best uh, of what you have. Um, he was so clear. So from the beginning, um, he will tell you, that's what I need from you to graduate. If you will do that in one year, two years, three years, you are graduated. So from the beginning, you know what you have to do. Um, also, his office was open anytime. Um, whenever, uh, uh, whatever the question that you have, you can go um, anytime. He will give you the answer. If you have any family problem, he will uh, help you. Um, he's so patient. Um, usually, his words uh, um, is a few words, but it's in the point. Um, he can. 
uh, make you laugh and cry on the same time. So I still remember uh, sometimes when I go to his office and uh, tell him about a lot of stories and he just smiled to me and make everything it's simple. Uh, and also Nasruddin, uh, he teach me that usually you have to give the second chance and more than second chance for the one to succeed. Um, and we are trying to learn from him all of that. Uh, to, to conclude, uh, you will, can see now that uh, any time that I have any problem, I can call Khatira. I have any question, I can call Slava, Dakaria, Sharif, Abshik. We still have uh, this link together. Uh, Nasruddin, he did that. Exactly, he created the family. And about uh, the thing that he says something that makes you want to cry and laugh at the same time. Whenever he sees me, he goes like, are you still in Egypt? And I say, yes. And he goes, shame on you. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's been an hour and it felt like 10 minutes, honestly, or, or five minutes even. So to conclude, I know you guys, it's late for you in Houston. So um, I'm just going to ask you one question and I'll just um, call your name and then you can go as we, as we go. Um, wow, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm overwhelmed. It's, it's been a lot. So I just want to ask you guys, um, he pushed you a lot to be the best version of yourself and he did a lot for you personally and professionally. So if he's listening to you right now, what you would say and just don't say thank you elaborate like imagine he's right there in front of you and just go say what's in your heart Ahmed Olsen. Uh, well uh, Dr. Nasruddin knew how we appreciated him so he already like knew that uh, uh, Dr. Nasruddin was a father to me and uh, I enjoyed working with him for eight years and uh, um, I appreciate I that. Something? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, don't reference, reference him as, as a third person. He's right there in front of you. So just talk to him. Uh, okay. I'll, <laughs> it's difficult. Uh, I, uh, I appreciate the, all the help that he gave us and the opportunity he provided us. I know a lot of people, he... He helped us to, to be here. Yes, maybe we were qualified, but if it weren't for him, we wouldn't have got our degrees. Uh, like he always said, uh, he used to say that petroleum engineers not, know nothing about chemistry. So, and he always used to tell me, you, you talk too much. So yeah, like everybody says. Uh, uh, when I first came, uh, I remember I used to drive him around i <laughs> i went like he when he was for example external examiner at university of houston i go with him then he decided life is too short to drive with me <laughs> so he, he found somebody else uh, i enjoyed our time together i learned from him a lot uh when he wanted to have uh, a ta with him he asked me to take his course and be responsible for the lab and uh, I appreciated this opportunity to improve myself and like to help him. I felt like I want to make him proud. And uh, I think I, I think I did. Uh, like I, I saw it in his eyes, like when I graduated with my master or PhD, like uh, as if his son is graduating or he is graduating. Uh, I will always appreciate that. Uh, after graduation, uh, what I uh, what I regret that uh, I didn't talk to him as often. I usually like to check on him with his son. Uh, I didn't want to bug him because he has a lot of students and he was sick his last days. But coming back to it, I, I thought I might have. Uh, contacted him more, but uh, at least like uh, I saw him one last time before we buried him. 
So, uh, sorry. It's okay. Thank you, Ahmed. Uh, you guys, it's okay to get sentimental. His family is going to see that. So they will know how great he was as they will appreciate their father more. So, um, Kate. Um, so, first of all, I'm very mad with him that he, he leaves. So I would tell him, you have to announce that very clearly. And would you please leave longer voicemails if you call next time? Uh, so that I could listen to more of your voice uh, with the voicemails that I have left. Uh, the longest voicemail that I have from you is 11 seconds, which I cherish. Um, and don't worry about the last paper that is under revision. I make sure Farid and I get it published because Farid's name is there. So uh, I make sure that we both uh, get it published in your honor. Um, yeah, rest in peace. Thank you, Kate. Shada? Uh, okay, Nasruddin, um, the main lesson that I learned from Nasruddin, um, and he usually say that, don't talk too much and work harder. That was... Uh, uh, the main lesson after staying, um, I learned a lot from him, but that's the main uh, point. Um, and he learned that for me was a funny story. Um, and I will usually remember him. So he gave me uh, the res responsibility to buy a new equipment, uh, XRD. Uh, so I was just trying to figure out from which vendor that we can buy that. And um, I had a presentation uh, about uh, my research and why we are presenting. We had a question uh, about, uh, did you perform uh, the XRD before and after uh, uh, the experiment? So I mentioned I uh, performed the test before the experiment and I didn't stop at this point. I was, uh, telling the story that uh, we are trying to buy the new equipment of XRD because the test is expensive and I was talking like for five minutes about this point. So uh, after the presentation, he didn't mention anything uh, because the best answer, no, I did this experiment before the test and that's it. Uh, and uh, that was in the first year that I joined his group. Uh, for the, uh, the remaining time, every day, or anyone uh, that he has, a when he has a visitor in the office, he could come and tell them about the XRD story. Uh, if he is walking um, uh, on the department and I'm walking with him, he stops someone in the elevator and tell him, Shahata, tell them about the XRD. So that was the lesson, but he was so funny. Usually Nasruddin, uh, he was smart and uh, he was so funny. Uh, Sorry to interrupt Shahata, but he had a very nice quote that uh, still now I'm using it with people. He would tell us, you know what, your life story is very interesting, but how can I help you? So That's translates true. to what you were describing. That's true. That's true. Uh, so Nasruddin teach us uh, how to work hard and uh, be in the point. Um, I want to tell him that I was so lucky uh, that I was working with you and learned a lot from uh, you, Dr. Nasruddin. Allah Thank you, Dr. Ah, well... I don't think I can actually speak as if Dr. Nasruddin is in front of me because it feels very personal and I'm not very good with expressing my emotions, <laughs> I believe. But I'm actually glad that I did uh, push myself and did express all the appreciation when he was alive and when he was with us. 
uh, on a couple occasions. And uh, yeah, I don't even know. I mean, it's overwhelming, all the memories and uh, uh, just the story uh, Shihata just said. Uh, I'm, I'm still, there is almost every day that I remember something funny or some lesson because he was the biggest influence basically on my life in the last almost seven years. And uh, um, I, I uh, talking about the story that Shihada said, I still remember sometimes the joke he used to say, it's very interesting, you should write a book about it. <laughs> when, when you would go on a tangent and you would not uh, actually speak what he asked, he would say that, yeah, your life story is very interesting. Write a book about it, but for now, actually answer my question, right? Anyway, uh, the takeaway is just my enormous appreciation for um, all the help and all the guidance and everything that he actually invested in me. All the efforts, enormous amount of patience and yeah, and I owe a lot of my uh, like career going forward to him and basically it forms my whole livelihood. Either way, it's hard for me to kind of address this point, but I just uh, hope he rests in peace. Thank you. Chan? Hey, if Dr. Hisham is sitting in front of me, I will say, Dr. Hisham, um, the last two times when I visited College Station, you were not there. I wish, I wish I get a chance to see you there. Um, it's just unfortunate. I really, really miss you. If you're sitting in front of me, I really want to hug you. Um, I want to say, and I have to say thank you for fighting for me. I know that without you, I won't be a petroleum engineer for sure. Without you, I, I, I'm not going to like admit it by the petroleum engineering department even. Um, you changed my life trajectories and um, there are just so many things I want to share with you, but I wish I can have a voicemail from you, but the only thing I have is um, on my walk anniversary, you text me congratulations from LinkedIn. And I'll always keep that. And I'll always remember everything you told me. Um, thank you for helping me. And there always be a very soft place in my heart for you, only for you. Thank you. I miss you. Thank you. Yamak? Uh, there is there's too much to say, honestly, with with respect to Dr. Nasruddin. You know, he was, uh, if I had to maybe say one word, I've heard many people refer to him as father and grandfather and stuff, and I would refer to him as the godfather. <laughs> he was uh, truly, truly a man who, uh, he cared about everybody's uh, personal lives and academic life, and that's really something that's rare with, a, with an advisor. I remember there was this one time I took a test with him and uh, I thought I did, I did I thought I did really well. And I checked my grade and it's like a 65 or something. And I'm like, oh man, well, what happened? And there was like this 30, there's like this 30 point problem. It was like very disproportionately, you know, the points that were made for that, for that one singular problem. And I remember it was right down the molecular formula for partially hydrolyzed polyarcholamide. So uh, the, the chemical structure. So, you know, I did it, I wrote it down, it was correct, I submitted it, X, minus 30 points or something. So I'm like, what's going on? So I forgot to put in brackets, subscript end, as in it's a repeating, repeating uh, unit. And so that's how, how I, I remember recalling that Dr. Nasruddin was a very detail-oriented man. You couldn't, you know, get past with some, excuse my language, like BS answer. Another time he would ask us questions in class and, uh, 
he knew me very well. He knew the way I, I kind of went around a little bit sometimes. And when I answer a question, he started playing the violin as in just noise. You know, like he knew that I was just talking, but I don't know what I was talking about. And so he exposed me and he would like smile and I'd smile and he'd tell me it's okay to say you don't know the answer. You don't have to basically be us. Uh, what I'm trying to think of some, uh, uh, Alhamdulillah, I mean, thank God I got to meet Dr. Nasruddin two weeks before he passed away by chance. I met him at a Yemeni restaurant in Houston. Um, and that was honestly something that I'm so happy about. Uh, it was just by chance. I was going to get, get some food and I saw his son there and I saw Dr. Nasruddin was in the car and I said salams to him. And that was honestly something that uh, I was very happy about. And he was definitely obsessed with donuts. Donuts was his favorite thing. He'd always mention donuts. You know, he'd be like, oh yeah, you petroleum engineers, you guys like to eat donuts and and that was like his, uh, his spiel that he would go on whenever he had the chance. Honestly, like I said, there's so much to say about Dr. Nasruddin. Um, yeah, and I, I rarely, um, I've had a lot of people close to me pass away before, but uh, with Dr. Nasruddin, it was a very emotional time. I had to take, off, take time off work. Uh, it, was, it wasn't, you know, just so I can escape work. It was truly something very emotional for me. And, uh, I mean, the only thing I could say is Allah Irhamu and, you know, may God forgive his sins. And he means a lot to me and I'll never forget him, inshallah. And uh, hopefully we'll continue his legacy through our good works and through our academic uh, endeavors. Thank you. Uh, Abshek. Yeah, just like... Just like all of you, uh, all of the people mentioned, it's really difficult to express in words what we feel for him. And also imagine him in front of us, it's just it's too emotional. Uh, and that's the connect I think he had with all of us. Uh, but still, if, if he was he was in front of me, the, the repeating thing that we always say is, it's, it's just that he, thank you can't be enough. He has... He's made careers, uh, he's made our lives. Career is a very small thing. He's influenced all of us so personally. Uh, he's made us realize uh, our potential in, in every aspect. He's made us more human. Uh, being in, in, in his presence or talking to him has always enriched us every which way. Uh, Academically, okay, that's fine. Most of the advisor would enrich you. But just talking to him about how to face life, how difficult the problem is, he'll always have a smile on his face and he'll hear you out. Uh, as many of the people before said that he, he was a great listener. Many times that's all you need as, as graduate students in struggling in life, uh, away from your family, struck with your research. Many times all you need is just a to fall back on someone who cares for you. And he was there uh, when we were there and even when we graduated. I think I, for me personally, every year, uh, the Labor Day holiday would be the place, would be the time I go to college station and always meet him. That's the day we get work off uh, and universities would be open. So every year uh, I made a point to meet him and that's the last time I met him. So. I really regret not being able to meet him after last Labor Day. I was looking forward this year as well. One thing definitely I would tell him as if he was in front of me is that he should have taken care more about his health. Uh, he's, he's endured a lot. He, he, shouldn't, he shouldn't have taken for granted his, his health. Uh, I, know, I know he had the best interest of everyone in his mind, but he should have been a bit, a bit selfish on this front. Should have, should have taken care of himself a bit more, so we would have had uh, more time uh, with him. So I think that's that's one complaint I would I would definitely raise if I was in in front of him. We have told I'm pretty sure everyone have told him so many times that he need to slow down a bit, take care of his health a bit more. But that's how he was. He he, he would always jokingly say that if I stay at home. I would be just waiting for for my death. Basically, that would be worse for him. He he couldn't he couldn't 
just stay away from from people he would be always always at, at the cost of his health he would care to come over uh, to the university talk to the young minds he felt as i said he felt more younger by talking to us he just felt more energized energetic by talking to us so that was one thing that uh, kept him going but still i felt that he would have made our, all of our lives much more impactful had he been here he would have been much more happier if he see us uh, succeed and i but whatever life he had i would like to really thank him from from the bottom of the of my heart uh, for bringing this opportunity to from in front of all of us to know, to to know him and to have been able to talk to him and and you know personally had so much impact on us i have not known anybody who has had was impacted so many lives and once he's gone you could see the emotion the love that pours out of everybody's heart and that can't be that can't be done if, if a person is not selfless and had really cared about you so again thank you very much and i really hope that he rests in peace um, and he has all the endure and dearment that he had now he can at least relax and and have a good life beyond this thank you so much uh, sharif hey uh, as dr nasreddin was here like it's hard to imagine him in front of you but if i say it like send a message to him like i'm sure he's in a better place right now uh, and i'm sure he's happier now but like he's made us all happier and he's made our lives better and I'm sure I'm not the only one that misses him or is thankful to have met him, but I think, like, at least I see that he helped me probably more than anyone else and helped supported me personally a lot, not just academically. And I'm always grateful to that, uh, like, the support I. got from him was a father's support it's, it's like like i we had our differences and we fought even at some times and i got upset with him and that's just how family is so like if i'm send him a message up say i'm sorry for anything i've done uh, that might have upset you and i'm really thankful to have been able to get the chance and the fortune of being part of your army i really wish like you had like people had had a better like more time to spend with you at the same time i i know that in your late days you, you suffered a lot so i'm sure it's better for you that you have like you've been released from that pain but like your legacy is going to live on beyond just your days and like as like that's like one of the very few people you see in life that you know for sure that he's made the world a better place he's a person that affected so many lives that like i don't think there's like throughout my life i could point out anyone else that has that much effect on the world and i wish he knows how much he means to every one of us and how much he's made a difference in the world Neil you're on me you're muted. Mm-hmm. Oh I'm so sorry. I just had to plug my uh, laptop it was dying. <laughs> so uh the crew can you share please? Yeah it's uh, getting uh, 
Can you talk or? Um, Someone circle around and go back to okay, the yeah, Dr. Farid, then, then we'll go back to the camera. So, yeah. So if Dr. Nasruddin is here, he's here, he's always with me, actually. I always, like, remember his face laughing at me. So, I did publish a lot of papers with him, many journal papers. And every time, every time we, journal, we publish one, he sent me like sometimes he usually sends a paper to the SP, especially if it's SP paper, the journals. He sent me when he got the confirmation or the acceptance. He called me to his office and then shake my hand, sometimes hugs. And then we usually celebrate, like go, he take me for a lunch or for breakfast. Every time, every time we have a paper. So sometimes we even with his family, with Dr. Mona and Muhammad. Uh, I did. I did travel a lot with him. Like uh, we went to. We have. I have many, many, many memories with him. Funny, funny ones. And um, the time when the qualifier, uh, the qualifier uh, in our year was a little bit tough. Like there was change in the rules, and we had as Muslim no group, we had some difficulties with this rules. And then when the grades came out, he usually know it before it's it's out. He called me to his office and then he he know, he know I was worried about uh, about my qualifier. And then he told me congratulations about the, the, the exams. When I had my son, he was a premature. It was a difficult time for me. Uh, he and Dr. Mona, and it was all there. It was all there for me. I had a tough time here, and he was always. I I was always know that there is someone here for me. I can go back and ask for help. I like I have a support here. Uh, no worries. I I never worry about anything. Usually call him like even after I graduated, after I left college station. I usually, I'm, I usually call him. Yeah, how are you? And usually take his opinion even in some personal uh, issues. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We'll keep, I will keep publish. I will keep into all the publishing and yes, as Hakala said, we have one paper. And uh, I have another two uh, but, uh, submitted to a journal paper with his name on it. And make sure, inshallah, that this uh, paper uh, published, inshallah. Rabbina arhamu ya fili. Wada qabba minnu kul a'malu. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um... The fact that you guys are extremely emotional and the fact that some people are speechless and they just can't talk is uh, beyond me actually. Uh, thank you so much for joining today. And I just want to say something uh, that you guys were his family, his, his second family, and you were lucky enough to um, work with him and he loved you a lot. and. He truly had a piece of him in each and every one of you. So you could carry his legacy forward. And every paper you publish, everything you do will have a piece of Nasruddin in it. So congratulations, you guys. You made it. And thank you so much for joining today. And um, I'm actually glad I had the opportunity to talk to all of you and um, to hear from you. Thank you so much again, and I wish you a peaceful night after this emotional time. Thank, thank you, Nihal. But uh, one more thank thing you, that I want to uh, highlight—I want to highlight before we leave. Uh,
to Dean, Dr. Nasser Dean, he started working in the university, uh, I think in 2008 or right? So yeah. all of these stories that you uh, know and all of these uh, students that you can see that he affected on this life, that was only on uh, the last 10 years of his life. And um, you can imagine that um, uh, he, he had a uh, health issue, uh, but um, he usually, he usually has the energy for you, whatever he had. So all of these stories was lost in the last 10 years of Nasruddin. Yeah, I, I was not his student, at least yet. Uh, and, and he invested in me. He spoke with me all the time. He invited me to all kinds. I always meet him at ATC and we always have the best time. And uh, he was a great man. Yeah, you know, um, uh, a lot of times you have a boss. You should be very extremely lucky to have a boss that who is mentor as well. It's different. A lot of people are only boss. So imagine having a boss who is a mentor and as well as family too. So it's the whole package. I mean, you, you rarely can find even the package of boss who is a mentor to you. You have usually seek mentorship outside, um, not from your boss, but uh, he was all of these. So that's why he impacted um, all of us and our lives, not in one dimensional uh, in, in different things. Uh, so, yeah, he, he, he will not be forgotten for sure, ever. Of course. Actually, we're demanding this. He's a story, it's not just among us. Uh, all my family and friends know him. Yeah. So, yes. most of my friends, when uh, they heard the news that he passed away from me, um, she called me, she said, he was such a good guy. The whole night we were talking about him with my husband. Like they, they never met him even. They just heard the stories from me. So because I kept talking about him all the they time. They saw him in your wedding. Like, what, what, Shari? They saw, uh, they saw him in your wedding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, yeah, thanks, Shari. So he... He was in my wedding. My, my dad came to US after six years for my wedding. Uh, and Dr. Hasham and his family also were there. He was like my second dad. I mean, the same uh, speech that I gave and I thanked my dad. I did the same for Dr. Hasham because it was true. He was, uh, he was part of my life and my I mean, everything, it's a big void that um, I'm sure it won't get filled. Yeah, I mean, like everything in life, uh, we have to deal with it, but for sure it won't get casual. It, it won't get uh, filled. But yeah, I mean, uh, I'm grateful to him. So for where allow, I am. Allow me to say this. He raised you guys to be strong. So you'll be strong yeah. for him. Uh, one more thing that I want to highlight about Nasruddin, Dr. Nasruddin. Uh, when you sit and talk with uh, Dr. Nasruddin, you feel that he is simple Egyptian guy, okay? But the way that he can manage um, uh, a lot of students from different cultures, different countries, different age, um, um, I learned it from him how to be open-minded and um, be open to all of these cultures. So um, I was so impressed to see Nasruddin go in detail with uh, Indian students or Iranian students, Russian students um, from everywhere, uh, South America. So uh, that was Nasruddin. Sure. I, I, I'll say this in Arabic I, uh, because it's like very Egyptian. Uh, whenever he asked me, like, uh, are you still in Egypt? Shame on you. He says, <laughs> so it's, like he's asking me to, to get a duck or something from Egypt to you because it's, it's very famous. So, so there is a funny guy for anyways. organizing this and, Thanks, and everyone Thank else. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, this I was the least we could do for him. I wish he was here um, to see this, but uh, I'm sure on different occasions we all expressed our gratitude to him. Yeah. He knew very well, I mean, but luckily, that we love him, truly. 
luckily we, we were able, this is like a side point here, we were able to gather $7,500 for Dr. Nostradin to build three wells in Africa. So, uh, and it happened very fast. The money yeah. came in like this. So, so that's another testament to Dr. the love that people have for Dr. Nostradin. And imagine three wells just like this from his students even. He only has one son in the United States, all his family is abroad. And all the, that money that came through was mostly from uh, his students and uh, his coworkers. So like I said, and everyone else said, just another proof and testament to the love that people have for Dr. Nostrobin. We're telling the story so people can actually know who he was. And I'll tell you something, the students are really, really looking forward to this. And this is for his family and for the generations to come to know who Nasruddin is. So uh, I would like to thank you all. Uh, yeah, really before we finish, I believe uh, yeah. Zachariah didn't have a chance to answer his question. He, he doesn't want to. He, yeah, he's speechless. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Just, yeah. Yeah. So when I said, like, some people are speechless, I was actually referring to them, so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you all for joining, and thank you, Dr. Ahmed Garhi, for um, organizing or giving us to you. They are kicking me out, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying that we can, yes, stay, yeah. yeah. Okay, have a good Bye. night and morning, okay. everyone. Um, you thank too. you again, Nihal. Thank you. Thank you, Nihal. Thank you, thank you. Well, thank you. Well, Stay safe. Have a good, have a good night, Khotel. Yeah, you well. Stay safe. I will one. contact you soon for the paper. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye